In this video, I will try to cover everything in Enscape from beginner to advanced in only 10 minutes because that's really all you need to learn Enscape. Let's go. We all know that you can move around in Enscape with WASD or arrow key, so I'm not going to include that. But if you want to move faster, you can hold shift while moving. You can hold control to move even faster. And if you want to become Usain Bolt, you can hold both shift and control at the same time. Hold the right mouse button to orbit around the model. To match the view in SketchUp with the Enscape view, click the auto align icon. You can scroll in or out with a mouse to zoom in or out the area where the cursor is located. To teleport somewhere, just double click to that area. Use Q and E in the keyboard for vertical movement. If you are in aerial view and want to switch to eye level, just press space. Hold right mouse button and move for change of view angle. Press M for map to have a better understanding of where you're located. If you take eye level rendering, usually use two point perspective. But if you take aerial rendering, use the three point perspective. If you want to create axonometry renders or elevations, use orthographic view. To get help for your rendering composition, use the guided lines in the video editor. A simple composition rule is the rule of thirds. You place the main object in the intersection of the vertical and horizontal lines. Another composition rule is the rule of centering, where you place the object in the center of your composition. Use a field of view of 60 to 70 degrees for exterior renders that are in horizontal aspect ratio. Set up your cameras in Enscape to switch easier between your views. Set up presets in the visual settings to test out different configurations. Link the presets with the views and render everything with one click through batch rendering. Use depth of field to blur out elements that are taking too much attention. Use vegetation or other elements to frame your focal point. To have a precise aspect ratio in the Enscape window, use the save frame tool. If you're going to use the renders for stories or vertical content, use a 9 by 16 aspect ratio or a 1080 by 1920 resolution. If you're going to use the renders for a PC, use a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. If you're going to use the renders for Instagram posts, use a 4 by 5 aspect ratio. If your material is not repeating itself correctly, make sure that the material is seamless. To set up grass material, make sure you have the grass material type selected. For better grass, use the texture in the link in the description. To have better reflections in your window, Windows, apply a field texture and configure it as a glass with transparency. Lower the roughness and higher the specular slider. The albedo map is an automatic material map created by Enscape based on the diffuse textures. To have realistic currents, apply a transparency mesh cutout and turn it to foliage type or soft illuminated. If you find yourself using the same materials often, use the favorite button to find them faster. For realistic materials, make sure to search for the keyword PBR, which stands for physically based rendering, meaning it is based on the real world. Here's some of my favorite materials from the library, which I found work best. For some realistic materials, I make sure to add imperfections like scratches or fingerprints. If you're wondering where I get my PBR materials, check out texturebox.com, link in the description. To add realistic metallic materials, turn the metal slider all the way to 100%. To create depth in materials, import displacement maps, bump maps, or normal maps. For realistic water, switch to water material type and make sure that the wind option is turned on. For realistic vegetation leaves, use the foliage material type and for realistic car paint use the clear coat material type and finally for a carpet use a carpet material type in the material settings you can automatically configure many different materials just by naming them correctly the default sun intensity is set to very high keep it at 7 to 15 percent for optimized sunlight to change the time of day hold shift and use the right mouse button or use the keys u and i in the keyboard to mimic realistic lighting and environment import hri images in the sky section to apply the spot lights you only need three clicks the sphere light will distribute lights equally in all directions and the rectangular light will distribute lights in rectangular shape okay so right now we are halfway there if you enjoyed so far make sure to click the first link in the description to learn realistic rendering in just 14 days if you want to see the effect of lighting without interfering of materials use the white rendering mode the disc light is useful for circular light distribution apply is profiles for realistic spotlight distribution here's some of my favorite is profiles which you can find in the link in the description turn up the sun completely and create a fake one with spotlights for more realistic lighting turn on lamps use a self-illuminated material type to check how balanced your lighting is use the light view mode to change the sun intensity of all lights at once use the artificial light brightness slider. 
To change the materials of assets, make sure to click in to access all of the options. Even though the asset library is great, make sure you don't overcrowd your render. Here's a few of my favorite assets that I recommend. If a model is taking too much space, you can make it a proxy. To add your own assets in Escape, you can use the custom assets feature. To find better 3D models, filter the polygon amount in SketchUp Warehouse. For smoother workflow, turn off the edges and profiles in the SketchUp view. To place multiple assets at once, use the bucket tool in the multi-asset placement. Place multiple assets in a straight line with a linear placement tool or place multiple assets in a circular area with a circle pane tool. If your PC is struggling, turn off auto update and only turn it on once you have made the changes. Also, lower the rendering quality while editing and only tune it up for final output. Most of the effects here are useless for me except maybe the vignette, so just turn the others off most of the time. In the sky section, you can configure Azure Eyes on the default sky. Also, input Azure Eyes from the Enscape library. In the output setting, you can select the resolution and aspect ratio as well as the exported format. You can always save your settings as files if you want to use them later for other projects. To import those settings, use the loading presets option. To take away the focus from background, you can try using the fog option. For more dynamic animations, try using the wind option. Default saturation sometimes is too low. I like using between 105 and 110%. For animations, add two keyframes and now you have a camera path. If you want to change the path, you can add an extra your keyframe just by clicking the trajectory and moving the keyframe to a different position. To change the animation length, exit keyframe and just change the length of it. To change the depth of field throughout the video, just change it per each keyframe. To change the time of day throughout the video, just change it per each keyframe as well. You can also change the field of view just by doing it the same way throughout the video, just change it per each keyframe. To make a lighting transition, you can export a video with the lights on and one with the lights off and blend them with post production. To make changes to the path, click on the keyframe, move around and click on update position. Turn on the ease in and ease out for smoother movement. Turn on the shaky camera option if you want your video to look more amateur. And before exporting, press play for preview to make sure you didn't make any mistakes. Mono panoramic images show the same image to both eyes in virtual reality. Stereo panoramic images show a different image to each eye in VR, which makes it a bit more realistic. To create multiple panoramic images at once, use the batch panoramic option. Once you create them, they will be found in the upload management option. You can download the image as a file, you can send or open it as a link, or you can even have it as a QR code to access it easier. To explore the files, even if you don't have Enscape installed, you can use export as standalone file. To explore the whole file with virtual reality, you can connect your headset to the standalone file. If you work in Teams, use the collaborative tool to add comments and have smoother workflow. These were just some quick tips, but if you want a full detailed breakdown about how I created this render, make sure to watch the video right here.